So, following on from my last video, I've now got three Y backplane register cards. And the idea with e these is each of these is just a 16-bit uh, register, and so far these three are absolutely identical. <clears throat> now this is by design actually, because in the previous uh, cases of my cards I've uh, been making them quite specific. It takes a long time to make them and uh, they get quite tedious. So with these I just wanted to make it so the card was the same design. Uh, now I've covered the design of these on my uh, blog, again, uh, relaycomputer.co.uk. Uh, and on there you can find all the design and how the PCBs have been uh, designed and, and so on. So at the moment these are all generic, but that's not actually what we want. Um, so I need to make uh, these into three different cards now. So this needs to be the XY register, this needs to be the M register, and this needs to be the J register. Or mix them up if you like, because actually at the moment they're all exactly the same. Um, and the way I'll do that is by uh, actually putting some wire links between these uh, connectors here. So just on screen now there's a uh, close-up of that. And this is what allows you then to configure the uh, the Y uh, connector at the back, the Y control connector, and allow it to basically wire out that signal. And it's at that point that this becomes a specific card. Um, so I'll do that shortly. Uh, now all of these cards don't act all exactly the same way either. So uh, the XY register is probably quite straightforward. That's used exactly as intended. So uh, you can uh, load the uh, lower 8 bits, you can load the upper 8 bits, you can select lower and upper, uh, but also then you can treat the whole lot as a 16-bit value and load and select that onto the address bus. So that's great for the XY register, quite straightforward. Uh, the M register is slightly more interesting. <clears throat> so that one actually, uh, you can load and select the lower 8 bits and the upper 8 bits. So we're calling that register M1 and M2. Um, but on the 16-bit uh, uh, variant of that, where it uses all the bits, uh, you can only read that onto the address bus. You can't actually load it from the address bus. And that's because basically this will be used to um, normally point to memory locations for loading and setting values. So uh, there's not normally need to do it uh, straight off of the um, off that bus. And the reason for uh, these these being limited is actually because that makes the opcodes work, because there's only so much room in the opcodes to, uh, to do things. Otherwise, you could actually make this a general purpose register just like this one, uh, and allow you to actually uh, write off of the bus as well. Um, most restrictive of all then is the J register. Uh, so again, we can load J1 and load J2, but you can't select it back off again. Uh, so you can't select J1 or select J2. Uh, on the 16-bit variant of that, uh, you can only read uh, onto the address bus, just like you can with the M bus, uh, with the M uh, card. Um, and the reason for this is this one will technically be loaded with, uh, tend to be loaded with addresses to jump to in the uh, go to commands. So when we're doing branching, uh, which I, I know you're all keen to see, uh, and actually I'm just making a start on that now on my uh, on my relay blog again. Um, so if you want to see how that design's uh, going on, you know where to go. <coughs> and um, yeah, typically you won't need to select back onto the data bus for this one. Uh, and you'll uh, you'll only be reading the value off again. So basically configuring these up, it does mean these LEDs here will never see the light of day again, so they'll never be lit up ever again on that particular card. But uh, again, to keep the design nice and simple, I just wanted to repeat it all the same. Right, okay, so let's uh, let's get these cards configured up then. Um, so I'm going to be using the uh, the Kynol wire. I'm going to go for a nice yellow, because I think that'll stand out quite well, so there'll be uh, no chance of not seeing the, uh, the connection. Um, and all I've got to do is try and remember how to use this now, because of course it's been a while since I've been uh, moving to uh, doing printer circuit boards, which are uh, much, much, much easier. Uh, in fact, actually on that as well, I probably will start replacing a lot of the older cards uh, with these PCBs over time, just to one, get consistency, but two, just to uh, maybe fix a few issues that's been there before, or maybe add a few new features. We'll see anyway. But it also means that I can uh, get all these designs uh, shared with uh, anybody who wants to look at them as well, and they'll all be available on, uh, on my site. Okay, right, I think I'll do this as a time lapse um, and then we'll, uh, we'll take it from there.
right so that's that uh, wiring done um, so yeah it took me a while to just get started with that again um, and <laughs> there was a point there just where I wasn't quite sure which way around the registers were uh, or which connections they were whether it was the um, uh, X on the left and Y on the right or Y on the left and X on the right it just didn't quite seem right but um, yeah it's XY M1 M2 and J1 and J2 so actually J2 M2 Y are the lower 8 bits and uh, X, M1 and J1 are the upper 8 bits. Cool, right, okay, with that as I set the way, I am uh, i don't trust myself anymore now, so I think we'll leave these boards a quick test just to make sure that actually the uh, the connections are wired out exactly where I'd expect them to be. Uh, so if I then try prodding the uh, the required control lines, the card should basically behave as, it, uh, as I intended. Now I know uh, for all the register bits on these, they all work as they should do. Right, already though, uh, I can see that straight away it'd be quite easy to get these cards muddled up. Um, so what they could do with is a bit of a label. Um, now you've probably seen before on my, um, my rear computer we have the, um, these little panels that I did. So these are these 3D uh, printed um, panels. And then basically I did, with my inkjet printer I just uh, printed on a label on top. Now it looks like, uh, and here's a close up picture of it, uh, that actually um, I think the PLA is starting to seep through a little bit and to be honest the quality of these is really terrible. Uh, so what I want to do is actually um, redo these now. I've got a laser printer. So uh, this one I've quickly made here um, and again here's a close-up of that. Um, and basically with these then the, um, I can uh, get much better print quality, uh, much sharper. I've also used the same font as well that's used on the PCBs as well because that's quite a, a good font for reading at small size, although I must admit I'm getting a bit old and that very small text is getting very hard to read. So I'm going to have to admit that I am, uh, my eyesight is going to start going now. Um, redesign these slightly as well so that they, um, when they're sideways now, at the top it'll tell you basically a, a sort of like a code for what the card is. Uh, so this would be the sequence of the lower card and then the uh, bay that it fits into, which in this case is W2. Uh, so that's all great for that. So as you can imagine, I have created some for these cards. So here they are here. And again, there's a close up uh, just here. Um, so for each one of these, you'll have the uh, the card at the top, where it's M, X, Y, or J. Uh, they're all Y based cards, so they're all the same. Uh, and there is one slight problem on here for the J1. The J1 says actually that you can select um, but really you can't, so those those lights will never light up. I'm not going to bother changing the legend strip though because it's, it's fine for the moment. So that's J, that's M and that's XY. And what I'll do is I'll just quickly uh, pop those onto the front. Uh, see if I can do this the way that keeps it in camera. Um, so it just clips onto the front like that. Bit of a tight fit sometimes. There we go. And all I want to do is just line them up so they're uh, reasonably well lined up with the LEDs, which uh, by default they should be anyway. Good, so that's the XY register, and that'll stop me uh, forgetting what it is. So same now for the M register. So again, I'm just going to clip that on the front. There we go. It's not too bad at all. Just almost to the right. Good, okay, so that's the M register. And then finally we've got the J register. Um, so as you might imagine, I'm going to uh, do new strips of these for all the uh, the rest of the um, cards as well. Just get those updated so they all look as good. Um, and this is much nicer. It's amazing the difference in print quality with the uh, laser printer. Um, just incidentally on these as well, what I've done is, uh, these are literally just a piece of um, laser printer paper and then I've just stuck tape over the front, uh, but also over the back as well, because I think that'll just stop any of the uh, PLA just seeping through, I'm uh, hoping, and just keep them nice and uh, nice and white. Uh, plus also when you put uh, tape on the front, they tend to curl up, um, so I'm hoping by putting one on the back as well, it just sort of, they'll hold each other. Um, and then all do on the back of these is just use double sided sticky tape uh, and then I can just stick those directly onto those and that should hold it all right. Uh, I've run out of that now which is why I've stopped uh, with these sequencer ones. As you can probably tell with these sequencer ones this is the uh, card I'll be doing next uh, because that uh, branching instructions uh, require uh, 24 clock cycles um, so that's going to require me pretty much to finish off the sequencer and uh, add all the extra stages. Again if you want to know more about that you know where to go on my blog. Right, okay. Uh, I think what I'll do now is I'm going to give this cards just a quick test. Um, so I'm just going to quickly rig up uh, a couple of connections. Uh, and what I want to do is just try uh, hitting the pins on the back of here uh, in the place I expect them to work. Uh, and then um, 
yeah, if they all work and configured OK, then I can pop those in the computer. Right, so I've rigged up the most basic of test rigs. Uh, so I've just got from up my power supply at the top, just coming down. I've got a 12 volt line coming down and the ground line. And all I've done basically is um, given the card power, because the card does need independent power to operate for the uh, switching relays, otherwise nothing will happen. And uh, the ground's coming out the back. So uh, again, got to make sure none of these things touch, and it's the most basic way of uh, running these things. And then eventually, actually, I do want to create a, a test board, actually, um, and I'll probably do a PCB design for that when I've got a spare moment, just so I don't have to keep having wires trailing around. Um, eventually, actually, I'd quite like to be able to run the computer from something like a, an Arduino or an embed, um, so I can actually sort of almost unit test these cards. So I'm actually a sort of software developer by trade, and um, obviously unit testing is uh, is always the thing to do. Um, so it'd be quite nice to be able to have some uh, run some tests against these just to make sure if there was a fault, we can sort of find exactly what it was and then sort of fault find what relay it is. So uh, that's another thing for another day, though. So for the moment, uh, flying leads it is. Um, so although this one's black, this is uh, voltage. That's because the uh, computer's nicked off with all my red ones at the moment. So uh, uh, there's loads of uh, spare wires in there just connecting various things up. So uh, we use black for the moment, but this has got 12 volts on the end of it, or it will have when I turn my power supply on. Um, and basically what I've done is I've taken the uh, connection out here and just brought it out to some pins that I'll be able to uh, just tap very carefully uh, with this crocodile clip. And what I've done is I've just brought upon here the um, one of the schematics, one of my older schematics actually, for this how this port works. Um, and the way this basically works is it's a bit hard to follow, but the top row is actually the uh, ones nearest to the um, back of the card, basically the bottom row of pins in this right angle connector and the bottom row are actually the ones in front. Uh, now actually that makes this, uh, on this particular cable, the wrong way around. So actually this row starting L1, L, L1, L, M2 is on the top row, and then the SEM and all the select ones are on the bottom. So for example, with this card, I'm expecting, which is the XY card, to be able to find the load XY on the uh, third pin from the top. Right, well, let's give that a try. So that's the uh, card powered on. And so you can hear the hold relays have just come on, uh, which is why it needs power. So I reckon if I go for the third one from the top, this should load X and Y, which it does. Brilliant. OK, so that's one down. Next one should be load X. Yes, load Y. And then that's it for that row. And the bottom row, uh, fourth one should select X and Y. Um, is that right? Fourth one, select X and Y. Yes, that's right, yeah, top right LED. And then select X and select Y. Cool, okay, so that's that one. So I'll switch on to the next card. Oh, that's a tight one. I shouldn't really pull those out by the cable. Right, let's pop those off. Put that to one side, and we'll go for the M register next. So it's that same again. Just pop in the connection here. And the good thing about this, if I've got any of these wired incorrectly, it's not the end of the earth because, of course, I can just uh, quickly change them by putting on a new wire link, which is quite nice. Uh, right, okay. I think that one's ready to go. So power on again. Good. That's the right sound. So we're working on the M card, so we want to find load M1, load M2 on the top row. So this should be load M1. It is. Load M2. Good. And then load M that isn't 1, because we can't load the M card, which is good. Right, OK. And then on the select side, um, we then need to go select M. Oh, I just, just lost my ground a bit there. That's better. Okay, so uh, select um, select M. Yes, select M one. And select M two. Cool. Okay. Right then, last card is a J card. Again, just pop that connector in, just put that ground on. So this is why you see as well, they're not a great 
fit those crocodile clips. There's always a risk of shorting. I mean, the power supply is fine actually. If it's shorted out, it will protect itself. So it's it's not ideal, but it's it's fine. It will survive. Um, right. Okay. So uh, let's give this one a try. So this is our J card. So what we're looking for now, and the top row. Load J1 should be or two, four, six in. Two, four, six. This should be load J1. It is load J2. Cool. And nothing else for that. And then on the other side, there's only select J, which is fourth one in from the right. Perfect. Good. Okay. So that's that's all there because it should be. Right. So uh, let's pop those into the card uh, into the computer now. Okay, so we'll just start first of all by uh, <coughs> moving the uh, memory cards up out of the way. Uh, and the reason why is because there is a modification on top of the card that would uh, eat into space for the uh, next bay. If I take this card out, you'll, uh, you'll see what I mean. I um, don't really have a good way of taking these cards out at the moment, so I tend to use these uh, hex keys to lever it out. Ideally, I would have a, um, maybe a couple of handles on there or something. So let's take this out. Okay, so uh, yeah, so there you go. You can see it's actually the uh, the little uh, set of re uh, relays on the top here. And the reason for this was that the uh, there was a uh, most of these relays it doesn't matter too much about the signal uh, timing if it's like that by a few milliseconds, um, because ultimately we wait for a clock cycle, which can be well, it's a lot lot longer depending on how quickly you want to. And the clock on this thing. So it's never something we'd be able to worry about, uh, about uh, things operating too quickly. And in the case of the memory card, of course, is that um, this is then using a, a memory chip. So suddenly the uh, signal's been out by 20 nanoseconds or so on is uh, quite important. Uh, so what was happening was the uh, signal to switch on uh, the memory uh, write was getting there quicker than other signals could. So what this basically does is it just goes through re it's just three relays just hooked together and just creates a bit of a, uh, a gate delay. So each really adds a little delay, uh, and that was just enough then to make the uh, card work. Have a think about if there's a bit nicer way of doing that when I probably end up redoing these cards. Uh, but for now, it works. So I'm going to push this one in. Hopefully that should. Going OK. This card can sometimes be a little difficult to go in. I think that's it then. Yeah, that's it. I have thought about actually having a better connection system on the back because those those connectors aren't really designed for uh, being inserted and taken out a lot. So uh, I will consider whether there's a nice way of doing it. Obviously, it's been a bit late now because uh, I've got so many cards already there. Uh, right, okay, what order are we going to put these in? I think I'll go for the XY register first. And again, hopefully, this should all line up nicely. Yep, that one's in. And then we'll go for the M register. And then finally, the J register. There we go, it's nice and easy. You can see those cards definitely look a lot better uh, with the new labels. Very, very pleased with those. Right, okay, that's the cards in. Uh, let's go and sort those buttons out. <laughs> 